Peoples, 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 what is going on? I am Finesse, and we are here in the Finesse Garage because today we are going to be talking about the top three things I learned on our trip from Savannah, Georgia to Chattanooga, Tennessee. All right, so like I said, we're going to be talking about that trip that Mrs. Finesse and I took uh, from here in Savannah to Chattanooga, Tennessee to uh, attend the uh, Jack Daniels event uh, with India Motorcycle. And that trip took us about five and a half hours uh, on the road with, and that is also counting the two stops that we had to make for fuel. Uh, one was just at a regular gas station and the other one was at a Bucky's, uh, which you guys saw in the video. Uh, but um, this was the longest trip that Mrs. Finesse and I had taken to date. All right. And um, in the course of that trip, I learned a few things. All right. Now, uh, before we even get started, uh, I know uh, a five hour trip isn't necessarily earth shattering. However, this was our first big trip, if you will. Um, so I, I thought a five hour trip would be something to kind of break us in uh, into getting into longer trips. All right. Uh, because there's still a lot of places that I haven't gone that I want to see. All right. So um, that said, uh, First and foremost, okay, anytime you take a trip, if you're taking a trip, make sure your bike has been inspected either by you or a professional and it is working properly, all right? So those things were done. These are the other things that we learned on this trip, all right? <laughs> all right, so first and foremost, uh, when I got that Indian motorcycle luggage, I told you guys that I was going to be taking that around and see how it holds up, you know, through a uh, uh, you know, traveling and this and that, right? Um, so that's exactly what we were doing. Uh, we were continuing to use that luggage. We've used it before, uh, but <clears throat> we were using the luggage um, and I had the tour bag on my back, on my bike, um, which is the large bag. And then Mrs. Finesse had the day bag, which is the much smaller bag. Uh, and she had that on the back seat of her bike. Um, and I'm here to tell you if you are on a pursuit now, I think the Roadmaster may have a little bit more room behind the uh, the the rider seat, but the pursuits do not have a lot of room back there. So having that huge bag in between me and the tour pack didn't quite work out too well. All right. <laughs> um, it, it the bag was uh, too large for me to use my backrest. And when, when I'm on the bike, the bag was pushing me forward, okay? So now I'm kind of choked up on the fuel tank, um, which throws everything else off, right? My arms are in a different position, my legs are in a different position, and um, what I was getting was is just some fatigue in my legs, you know, from being kind of pushed up. And then I know I've got the highway pegs, right? But when I put my feet on the highway pegs, that's still, out of position that what you know I can't stretch my legs out so essentially I went five hours without being able to stretch my legs out and that was that was kind of annoying um, <clears throat> so I will say though I the, the tour bag the tour bag worked great as far as holding uh, all of our stuff I packed enough stuff in there for myself and Mrs. Finesse uh, she only had a few other small items in the um, in the day bag um, however, the saddlebags on my bike were kind of not even really used. And I don't think Mrs. Finesse used hers either. Um, so kind of, yeah, that was a little bit interesting. So, um, but anyway, I would absolutely use this if I had a passenger backrest with the rack on it. I think that's really where the tour bag is going to shine. I think it's a replacement for a tour pack. Um, and you know, using it in conjunction with the tour pack, at least in my case, didn't really work out very well. All right. I don't think that that bag is actually designed to sit back there because on the back of the tour pack, it kind of curves on the edges and the, the, the day bag, there's no curve. It's just a square, right? So it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite fit well. If it had a rounded back to it or a front to where you could flip it around and push it, that would give you some more space. All right, so 
take note of that for the next people designing those bags. <laughs> uh, but you know, um, you know, you can't use your backrest with it. It pushes you forward on the tank and basically it made my legs sore. But since it was five hours, not a big deal, but on a longer ride, absolutely. Cause I plan on going to Texas that would, I would turn around. Okay. And, and redo all of that. All right, so the next thing on our list, or at least on my list, uh, fuel range, okay? <laughs> now, you might be saying to yourself, well, what do you mean fuel range? There's a readout. It tells you how far you got to go, all right? Okay, so hear me out, all right? We're riding down the road. We're enjoying the scenery. You know, we're talking to each other. You know, I'm, I'm looking at traffic. I'm making sure we're safe. All of these things, right? I, I guess you could say you can get distracted by that. Uh, you get distracted by paying attention to what's going on. Um, and at least that's what happened to me. I mean, you know, you, everything's out there for you to look at. Um, and when I noticed that we were getting low on fuel, it was actually Mrs. Finesse. She hit me up on the comms. She's like, hey, I've got like 55 miles till we're empty, right? And then I look down and I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> Uh, so luckily the next sign that came up said it was 50 miles, uh, to our exit. So in between us noticing that we had about 55 miles of range, uh, and that exit at 50 miles was nerve wracking. Okay. Um, now the bikes made it, you know, and when I filled up, I want to say it, I put in, um, a little over five gallons. So like we were, we were on the ragged edge. Okay. Cause it's a five and a half gallon tank. Right. Um, and when we, when we pulled off the exit, the readout on my fuel gauge, well, it's, it went from low to like nothing. Okay. <laughs> but at that exit, that was, we got to the exit, we got to the fuel stop. All right. The only reason I say that is that, you know, one, you need to pay attention to your gauges, all right? Two, I kind of wish there was a way to, you know, adjust the notification warning or something, all right? Uh, because when you're traveling, you know, there's different ranges between gas stops depending on where you're going. So if I could say, you know, at 75 miles, you know, give me a notification, you know, um, then as opposed to just when it's at 50 or 55, whatever it is, I can't remember. Uh, whatever it says low, it asks you if you want to be directed to the nearest f fuel stop. Um, but if you could program a fuel stop or, or program the bike to tell you when the fuel stop is, I think that would be, that'd be fantastic, right? Um, but at any rate, we made it. Though I can tell you from experience, those fuel gauges are fairly accurate. <laughs> so make sure you watch in your fuel range okay all right so before we get to this last one there's a there's a few other things that i kind of wanted to mention about this trip um and and the stuff that i talk to people all the time about all right uh, or we have discussions about all the time uh especially when it comes to friends that ride other bikes right so that windshield the ability to have that windshield to go up and down man is a life saver okay um when we were getting on we were getting on the freeway one time and i forgot to raise the windshield up and we're going down the road and the reason i noticed it is because my head was just vibrating and shaking and i was starting to get a headache and i was like what is going on and i i look i look ahead and i'm like man i forgot to raise my windshield right so, of course, we got off on the exit so I could slow down uh, to what? I think it's like 25 miles an hour. So I could slow down so I could raise the windshield and then we, we got right back on the exit. Um, and I mean, I'm telling you, it is night and day. That is something that if, if, if I didn't have that, you know what I'm saying? If I didn't have the automatic windshield, I think life would just, well, the, life on the bike would not be as, as fun as it is because... I like to wear half helmets, okay? Now, um, on this trip, I was wearing a full face. Anytime I go out of town, I wear a full face, okay? Which kind of brings me back to, the, or brings me to the next thing that I kind of wanted to mention on this trip. Uh, I was wearing a full face helmet, you know, when traveling. Um, 
That is absolutely what I do. That's absolutely what I will continue to do. However, I can't stand it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I can't hear the bike, um, you know, because I want to hear the I want to hear the exhaust. Uh, some some cars, not all, some cars when they're coming up on you, you can't really hear them until they're like right next to you. Um, so I like that less. Um, and but you know, for safety, you know, I'm gonna wear a full face helmet when I'm traveling in and out of town. All right. But uh, those those are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Um, and that having that head shape and the importance of a windshield. The right size windshield um, is, is going to be go miles and miles uh, when it comes to time to take a trip. All right. And since we've got those automatic windshields, you know, there's no swapping out or, or you know, measuring the right one or this, that and the other. Um, you know, you can have your style and your functionality as well. All right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the last and final thing uh, that I want to mention about our road trip uh, was taking breaks. Man, I, I am not one of those people that are trying to blitz through each state to get to where I'm going and say I did it in less than a day. I like to enjoy the ride. I like to, you know, feel comfortable on my rides. Um, and, and taking breaks is just a part of it. You know, you're going to... You, if you if you want, I mean, you can even um, stop at like interesting places, or, or you know, plan out the, your hotel so where you can kind of get out and walk around those types of things. Uh, but getting off the bike for at least 30, 45 minutes, I think, is going to do you some justice. It'll give you a chance to kind of you know move your body around and, and you know make sure everything's nice. Uh, but taking breaks. Or, or even though we only took two, this was a five hour trip, okay? And you know, it just happened to coincide with our fuel. Uh, but taking breaks is just, you, you gotta do it, man. That's, that's, gonna, that's gonna keep you alert and it's gonna make it, the ride safer for you, all right? So, you know, you're not trying to fight drowsiness or anything like that. Um, you, and plus, you're just gonna enjoy it more because you're gonna be seeing things and doing things. Um, for us as beginner, I guess, uh, touring tourists, if you will. Um, I think these were the most, the, these were the biggest things that kind of stood out to me, uh, as far as, you know, how to take these long trips. All right. So that's going to do it for my list of the things that I learned on our five hour trip. What do you, what did you guys learn on your first trip? You know, uh, what are some of these experiences that you had? Are they similar to this or am I completely out of bounds? All right. Um, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, so just throw it down here in the comment section and uh, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and ride every day. And most importantly, make sure you enjoying it. Peace.